Hello, everybody. This is Coach Allison back with week 24, Defy Aging. Uh, this week, we have two circuits of four exercises. <clears throat> Pardon me. And they're going to be running simultaneously, unless you have fewer than four people in your session, and then we'll run one at a time and then switch. Um, however, if there's more than four people, they'll be running at the same time. And they are run for 35 seconds on, 35 seconds off for only two sets each. So that's a little bit different as well. Let's run through the exercises. Station one is a seated shoulder press. Um, it's a standard shoulder press that we typically do standing, but we're gonna turn it into a seated one this week. And you might think a seated version seems like it would be something simpler because you're seated, but actually it makes you have to incorporate your core a lot differently and focus on your posture a lot differently. So you might notice some core activation that does make it seem more challenging. So we're gonna try it this week. Um, okay, so you're sitting on uh, one of the boxes that the coaches will have out for you. And we're doing that standard shoulder press, palms turned forward, nice steady tempo, not too fast, not too slow. And we're trying to avoid leaning forward, leaning back. I said that the opposite of the movements I did. That's hilarious. And yeah, that's our seated shoulder press. Again, it will, um, you will feel a lot of abs on that, trying to keep you up nice and tall. And that's our seated shoulder press. Okay. Uh, station two is a stability ball, medicine ball, chest press. So that's a new one. Let's go over that. So it involves one of these stability balls and a medicine ball. Yes. So you're going to start. This one's tricky to get in and out of. All right. We've done chest presses on the stability balls before, but with dumbbells. And we've done chest presses with the medicine balls, but on the floor. So putting this and this together is new. I wanna, I gotta make sure that I'm in the frame once I roll down. Okay, so you start sitting on the ball like this, have the medicine ball in your lap already. And you're gonna crawl out. Kind of feels really nice on the spine, actually. You have to make sure, however, that you go far enough down that your head is on the ball. So don't stop here where your head is like drooping back and not supported, because we don't wanna strain the neck, right? So. Already now you also want to make sure that you're not letting your hips sink down like this. So you have to engage your butt muscles, your glutes, and your hamstrings to keep your uh, hips up. So see how I'm nice and level here. Got your medicine ball in your hands. You want to also make sure you're grabbing on the outsides of the ball. See how I'm grabbing on the outsides and not just putting your hands underneath. If you put your hands underneath, you're not engaging like our pressing, our inward like pressing in muscles. I want to engage those muscles that you engage when you press and squeeze inward. That's why we're pressing on the outsides of the ball and pressing that ball up, bringing it up and down over the chest. Okay, when you're done, you can just kind of let the ball roll to the floor if you want your hands free to kind of help you up and you roll back up the same way that you got down. Oh. There's a lot going on with that one. There are some options. Now, if getting on and off of that ball is new for you, uh, your coach can kind of guide the ball, keep their hands in the ball with you as you're walking out, just to kind of help stabilize. Um, if the ball is not an option for you, you can do that chest press on the floor. If neither of those is an option for you, your coach will have an inclined bench. So, oh. Someone took my inclined bench away. I had one sitting right there. Okay. You can, your coach will have an inclined bench waiting for you on the turf as well to do that on a bench. So there are a lot of options for this, but I would love everyone to try that stability ball. Um, now, really quick, I don't want to make this too long, but I do want everyone, the medicine balls only go up to a certain weight. So let's say you can typically do a chest press with dumbbells, maybe with like the 15 pounders or the 20 pounders which would mean that's a total of 30 or 40 pounds. That's wonderful. But our medicine balls only go up to like, I think some of the gyms have like a 15 pounder and I think that's as heavy as they go. So you're like, wow, I know I can press more than this. I want you to still use the medicine balls, going back to that same reasoning that I gave you with holding the outsides. It's an entirely different type of engagement of the muscles as opposed to holding onto two handles and pressing the weight straight up and down by not having handles to hold on to. So you're just using the strength you have of squeezing inward. You're engaging these muscles differently by pressing inward and having to hold that press 
for that whole time. So I want you to, I want everyone to use the medicine balls, even if you know you can technically press heavier weights. And I guarantee you by the end of the 35 seconds, also being on that ball, you're going to be getting fatigued. So just a variety, use the medicine balls. Okay, team. So the next exercise is a contralateral step up. The contralateral just simply means that the weight is in one side and you're doing the work on the other side. So I'm using a kettlebell. I prefer kettlebells for a step up just because it's a bottom loaded weight. And I feel like that's more comfortable for this type of movement. So the weight's in my right hand, I'm going to place my left leg on the platform. So that's the contralateral component. So with this type of step up, we're not going to re remove this leg at all. So watch how I do this stepping up and then coming back down again. I'm not removing this. Pretend this leg is just glued to the stepper. And this is going to be your movement for the full 35 seconds. Since we're doing two rounds, we don't have to worry about switching sides halfway through or anything. When we come back to the next full rotation, then we will do the other side. So yes, you do have to remember what side you did for round one. Um, you can of course use different height boxes. So your coach will have a few options. So you can use whatever height is best for you. If needed, you can um, move your box or maybe your coach will set this up near something to maybe place your free hand on for a little balance assistance. And that is our contralateral step up. And the final station for circuit one, her circuit A is an elevated calf raise, which means your feet are gonna be on a little elevation, which allows your heel to actually dip down a little to get a little stretch so I'm using a weight plate. Your coach will find something appropriate. We really only want the elevation to be maybe like two inches up off the floor. So we don't want something too high. We're going to have this near a wall or a rack because we actually want you to hold on to something for balance for this. We don't want the balance to be a component of this at all. We want the, the only focus to be the calf raise. So you put uh, not just your tiptoes. We actually want the ball of the foot and forward. So from about here and up. So the ball of the foot forward is on whatever item you're using for your uh, calf raise. And then you lift the heels as high as you can and then let your heel come back all the way down to the floor. Notice how I'm keeping my legs, my knees mostly straight. But what we don't want to do is you're not bending the knees like this. We, I see this a lot when calf raises are new for someone. Um, so make sure you are keeping the legs straight and you're actually looking at my head going up and down. So you are actually lifting your whole body should start to feel some fatigue back here in those calf muscles. Um, and that's our elevated calf race. Station one for circuit B is a half kneel band row. So your band will be tied up to something like this. You're going to be holding both handles. And again, there's only two rotations. So you're going to be on one knee for round one and then on the other knee for round two. So remember which knee you start on. This is that half kneel position. Make sure both knees are bent to 90 degrees. Sit up nice and tall so your posture is up here so we're not slouched forward or leaning too far back. Shoulders down and back so we're not shrugging. And we pull those arms back. Elbows stay kind of right along your side. Pull, exhale, release forward. Half kneel band row. And if being on the knees is not an option for you, take this up to a standard row, meaning we're standing up as opposed to being in that um, half kneel position. But again, round one uh, on one knee, round two on the other knee, and that's the half kneel row. Okay, we have a kettlebell sumo deadlift. Get this out of the way. So we do deadlifts all the time, but the sumo deadlift we've only done maybe a handful of times or less. So a traditional deadlift, your feet would be hip width apart. A sumo squat, many of you know, so the legs are wide feet out. But a sumo squat, we would go pretty much straight down. That's a knee bend. But the deadlift, as many of you know, is a hinge. So we're hinging at that hip, keeping the back nice and flat. So we put that sumo stance with the hinge. So from the front, it would look like this. Okay, you can't really tell much of what's happening from the front. So let me turn to the side. Okay, so we have that wide stance with the toes slightly out, but I'm doing that hinge. So again, you hinge at that hip joint, back stays nice and flat. I'm keeping my shoulders rounded down and back. I'd say the most common thing to happen here is doing a little too much knee bend and also letting the shoulders round. So if I was to let my shoulders round, this is the proper form. But if I was to let my shoulders and my upper back round, this would happen. So as opposed to 
this happening with that rounded shoulder and back, keeping them down would look like this. So like the best way to help that, or to make sure it's not happening, is picture an X right underneath your kettlebell when the kettlebell is hanging down, and that's where you want the kettlebell to fall towards. So again, if I was to have an X right here, actually I can literally draw one on this turf. That's where I want my kettlebell to fall towards. Now, if I'm rounding my upper back and shoulders, it's gonna come out here and my X is here. So maybe that will help you. Your coaches might have to help with the form a little bit because a sumo deadlift is a little bit, feels a little bit different than a regular deadlift. So hinge at the hips, pop the hips and butt back. Back stays nice and flat. Don't allow the upper back and shoulders to round. Let's give it a try this week. All right, next station is going to hit some biceps. We're going to do a seesaw pattern, which means picture a seesaw on a playground. One side goes up, the other side goes down. So we're going to do hammer curls, which means palms stay turned inward. When one side goes up, the other side goes down. It doesn't mean they have to go fast. I, I think for a lot of people think the seesaw pattern also means speed for some reason, and it doesn't. So just a nice, casual, controlled speed. We're just making sure when one arm's raising, the other arm is lowering. Want to make sure we're getting a full extension at the bottom. So don't allow the hand to stop like here. Make sure it's coming all the way down. So watch out for that. Maybe do this in front of a mirror to keep your eye on that. And that's our seesaw hammer curl. All right, and station four is going to be a battle rope. I'm going to let your coach decide what battle rope um, variation they want to have you do. So this one is trainer's choice. Good luck. Okay, and for our team builder, we're going to be using the tank here. And each participant is going to do a shove pull. Okay, now the, you've all done, I think, a push where you kind of push it. But the way down, we're gonna do a shove, which is different. So put one leg in front and you just get to do a, a, a one shove like that. And then you walk up to it, do it again and do it again. You do that for the full length of the turf. It's very different. You don't get to do a running shove. It's just a one using all your might. Do that to the end and then we're gonna pull it back doing kind of a standard pull to get it back to the starting point, then your turn is done and the next person will go. So the tank, shove and pull, that's our team builder. Each per, uh, client, each participant gets to do that one time down and back. All right, everybody. So that's week 24. Hope you enjoy these exercises. See you back next week.